Ladies and gentlemen, in this video tutorial, I'm going to be demonstrating how you can compute the travel cost for a particular site layout plan that you adopt. So let's start with this example. Suppose on a construction site, right, and this is the building that you're constructing. And now let's say that I gave you three locations. So location one, location two, um, and location three. All right, so we've got three locations. Um, and let's say that for each of these locations, we also have a supply point, right? So it's a point where you want to store your materials at on a construction site. And let's suppose that you had three of them. So we had S1, S2, and S3. So three supply points. And you want to position these supply points um, each supply point has to be positioned at exactly one location. Um, the information that you also require are the matrices, of course. So there's a distance matrix. The distance matrix it gives you information about the distances between the different locations that you have. So we've got three locations, and hence we will have a three by three matrix L2, L3. L1, L2, and L3. And so always remember that for the for the same locations, it's always a zero because we're standing at the same location. And then let's say that we have this value 150 between L1, L2, 300, 200. Now this is a triangular matrix, and hence we have the same values exactly the opposite uh, direction so between l1 and l2 is exactly the same as l2 and l1 and that's 150 it's exactly the same as that one um and then 300 200 uh, also at the same time we have another matrix this time it's a travel trip matrix and so we've got three supply points s1 s2 s3 so these are the points where can get your materials from on your construction site again we don't have any values for the same supply points between the same supply points um, and let's just say that we've got a thousand here a hundred ten and then again it's triangular so same here same there and a ten okay so what we're trying to compute we're trying to compute the following so we're trying to get the travel cost between pairwise supply points. Right, so JN multiplied by DMN. And you sum this up over all M and N, so over all locations and over all facilities or supply points in this case. Um, and given that we've got triangle matrices, we're only interested in one-way direction flow, and that's the reason why I've got J is greater than Y over here for the facility. So always remember that for the notation, IJ corresponds to facilities, and M and N correspond to locations. So where do we start? Well, the first step is we have to start with a particular allocation. Of supply points to the location so let's just say that just for the case of uh, just for the sake of demonstration that we have the following allocation so um, s2 is allocated to location 1 s3 is allocated to location 2 and s1 is allocated to location 3 right so the first step after you've got your allocation sorted out is you have to convert that into the Z variable. So what do we have? The Z is indexed by two letters. So it's indexed by I, which is a facility, and then it's indexed by M, uh, which is a location. So what's the facility in this case? So the facility is S2. That means it's two for facility, and then the second index is for location one. And that is equal to one because uh, it's a binary variable, and it equals one if facility two is located in location one. And this is exactly the allocation that we have. What about for the second one? Well, same thing, Z first index on the Z, that's three. And then the second index is for location, which is two. 
we do the same for the third one z one three which is equal to one so now that we have our allocations converted into variable format we need to decide so this was the first step second step is we need to decide on the total number of uh, terms that we need to compute in this equation right so in this equation uh, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get a pairwise comparison right that's why we've got two z variables so one two it's because we're interested in the travel between one facility and the other facility so it's travel between uh pairwise uh between pairs of facilities and that's why it's a pairwise comparison and because of that uh what's the total number of uh, facilities that we have in, in in this example so we've got three supply points and we need to conduct uh, a pairwise comparison so it's three choose two two because of pairwise and that gives us three terms so three terms that we have to include and i can basically demonstrate that really quickly so i've got s1 s2 and s3 so my three terms would be uh traveling from s1 to s2 traveling from s1 to s3 this is the first one this is the second one and the third one is traveling from s2 to s3 and that's exactly so there's three and that's exactly the same as that right so it's three choose two so we've got three terms in our cost objective function now what about the third step so the third step is that we have to compute that cost function and the easiest thing to do is to start with um with the z's so looking at the first allocation that i have over here so my first allocation is between s1 and s2 now s1 so s1 right here is located in location 3 so i'll start off by writing this first multiplied by the second one which is this one the s2 so it's between s1 and s2 and s2 in this case is that allocation over here so z21 right so this is going to be the first term plus there's going to be a second term the second term is s1 and s3 so s1 again is over here z13 multiplied by this time it's s3 and s3 is that one so it's z32 and finally we're going to have the last term and that's going to be for this one right here so s2 s2 is that one right there z21 multiplied by s3 which is that one z32 z32 okay so now that i've got sort of half of my three terms uh figured out i've got a compute i gotta i gotta find what the indices that correspond to this letter the c and this letter as well the d so I'd have to have a C over here and I'd have to have a D. And it'll be the case for each of these terms as well. So a D, and a C, a D, and a C. All right, so let's start off by looking at the first term. So in order to know what the index, what the first index on this is, if I go back to my equation, well, the C has two indices. It has an I and it has a J. And remember the I and J, corresponds to facilities right so let's go down we need an i and we need the j how do we get the i and j well what i have over here is i've got an i and i've got an m and how did i know that well if i go back to my equation there's an i and there's an m for the first z there's a j and there's an n for the second z so i know that there's an i and an m on the first z and a j and an n on the second z so by labeling these indices on the z's I can now determine what my i is. So my i is one, my j is two, and it's the same for the d. This this time I'm looking at m and n for location, so it's three, and it's one. And then I do the same thing down here. So sorry, that should be uh, an m. So i m. So it's always facility location, j n. So my i's are one, j is three. In this case it's a three and a two and then i again m j n my i is two my j is three my m is one my n is two 
So I'm almost done. It's just that I've got to figure out what this is, what tau is. Tau is just the travel cost per meter. So that is typically given uh, for you guys. And we'll just assume that it's uh, $0.5 dollars per meter. Right, so each term now has to be multiplied by 0 0.5. So 0 0.5 and then 0 0.5. And I do that because it's what it tells me to do in the equation. So I've got this term at the start of each term. All right, so the fourth step. Fourth step is we need to extract values for the C and for the D. Um, I already know that these are ones, right? Uh, and it's because of these ones over here. So all the Zs are ones, so all the Zs in my terms are ones. I need to know what the values of C and D are. So to do that, uh, let's start by looking at C12. So basically, if I go to my matrix, C12, C is that travel trip matrix. And so if I'm looking for C12, uh, the way to remember it is that the first index corresponds to the row of the matrix, the second index corresponds to the column. And that's always the case for all matrices. So I'm looking at the first row and then the second column. So R1, first row, which is that one, and second column, which is that one, and that corresponds to this value of E. So C12 is equal to 1,000. You can write this down, 0 0.5 multiplied by 1,000 multiplied by 1 multiplied by 1 and then to get the 3 1 d 3 1 I go to my distance matrix my distance matrix I'm looking for 3 1 so row 3 column 1 I always remember it's d 3 1 so the first one is row second one is column so row 3 column 1 and that's 300 so multiplied by 300 um, and then actually let's let's go back and let's just assume that um, well we can, we can actually leave it at 0 0.5 let's just leave it at 0 0.5 so again sorry let's go back to the equation so the second term c13 so now it's c13 so my row for c13 my row is one my column is three so row one now it's column three so it's that value it's a hundred so that's going to be a hundred one multiplied one and then for the distance t d three two so if i go back to my um to, if i go back to my matrix um it's three two so three row three column two so it corresponds to 200 and then the final term 0 0.5 multiplied by uh, the C23 so row 2 row 2 column 3 that's a 10 10 multiplied by 1 multiplied by 1 and then finally the D12 that's going to be 150 all right um, so if we were to compute that, um, let me get my calculator to do the calculation. Um, so that first term was 0 0.5 multiplied by 1,000, multiplied by 1, multiplied by 1, multiplied by 300. That's uh, 150,000. 150,000 plus for the second term, we've got 0 0.5 multiplied by 100 multiplied by 200, that's 10,000. And finally, for the third term, 0 0.5, multiplied by 10, multiplied by 150, which is 750. Um, the summation of that is 100,060, so 160,750. And that's the total cost of the layout, of this layout that I've adopted.
this thing out of here. 